Okay, so this is going to be for a two-point perspective drawing. So a two-point perspective is anytime you have a corner, whether it's an exterior corner like the edge of a building or whether it's an interior corner like the corner of your living room. Um, anytime you have a corner, even if it's on the corner of a piece of furniture, you're going to have a two-point perspective. So you're going to draw a line. Let's say, just like the one-point perspective, you want it kind of off-center. So I'm going to draw about an inch and a half long slightly up and slightly over, but you can do it wherever you want. And then because we're making this up, we can make up our own horizon line and vanishing point. Just remember that you want your horizon line to be at five or six feet. I'm gonna do mine at five. So that means this is, let's say just to make it easy, this is 10 feet. So if I divide it in half, there's my five foot. So let me do my measuring and tick marks. Well, let's just make it 12 because it makes it easier on me. So every eighth of an inch is a foot. Three, four. So we got 12 feet, okay? So let's change that to 12 feet. So that means one, two, three, four, five. This is actually my new horizon line. So make sure that it's even and straight and horizontal. Go ahead and do that. So just like in a one point, your horizon line, excuse me, your vanishing point will be on your horizon line somewhere, but since we're doing two point, you're gonna have two. So for making it up, it's a good idea to get as close to the edge as you can, if not off the paper. It's usually more um, practical and more realistic if you have like a piece of paper out here and then you put your vanishing point there, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then maybe this one is like right here, okay? But you know, what's important is the further away the vanishing points are from each other, the more natural and realistic your drawing is gonna look. All right, so first thing you do is use your vanishing point to pull through the top of this corner. So back up to your vanishing point and out, oops, onto your wall. I have to do this in two steps because my ruler isn't long enough. And then you're gonna do the same thing down at the bottom. Okay, and then same thing from here to the corner and from here to that corner as well. Oops, that didn't show. So you should have something that looks like that. Now we're going to erase the lines we don't need, which are these, and you can go ahead and get rid of your horizon line so it doesn't get in the way. Because you just needed that to find where your vanishing points would go. So now you should have a back wall corner. So see how this is the back corner, and these are the two flanking walls, and this is your floor, and this is your ceiling. Okay, so next thing you want to do, we're going to draw a door just like we did in the one point perspective. So how do we do that? Well, let's say we still want it to be at eight feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right here. So I'm gonna use this vanishing point for anything I wanna put on this wall. So using this vanishing point through that eight foot, I'm gonna do a line out onto this wall. See how that works? And then I'm just gonna connect it with a vertical wherever I think that door should go. So just like that. So now I have a door at eight feet on this wall. So just like with the one point perspective, we do wanna show depth, but there aren't any horizontals in a two point perspective. So where you would normally come out with a horizontal here in a one point perspective and connect it with a vertical and all that, you're actually gonna use the opposing sides vanishing point. So, all the long lines for what you're drawing on this wall go from this vanishing point. All the short depth lines come from the exact same wall vanishing point. So I'm going to use my vanishing point. I'm going to connect it to that corner. Use my vanishing point, connect it to this top corner. And then I'm going to connect it with a vertical. See how that works? Now, the long lines, not the short depth lines, are gonna come from the opposing wall's vanishing point. 
So I'm going to connect the end edge of this to my vanishing point. It's really thin, so stay with me. There you go, you're done. So now you've got the thickness of the side wall and the thickness of the underside of that wall and the doorway. So if I want to do windows, let's say that I kind of want to do my windows here or maybe like that, it's a big grand window or something. So maybe it's two feet from the ceiling. So one, two, using the opposing side's vanishing point, pull through that tick mark. And then maybe it's three feet from the, the floor. So one, two, three. Okay, and then just connect them with a vertical. And now I have a window at the precise measurements that I wanted. Now again, with depth lines, you can't just go at a horizontal because horizontals don't exist in a two-point perspective, so I'm going to use this vanishing point for the depth lines. So connect your vanishing point to the inner corner of that window and the bottom inner corner. And then connect that with a vertical. Remember that it needs to be just a little bit thicker than that one because it's closer to us. Okay. And then using the opposing side's vanishing point to make those long lines, connect to that corner and then connect to this corner. It's going to be a sliver, but it'll exist. Okay. So that's how you do a two point perspective. Now how to get out onto the floor. So, there's a, a lot of steps to get the grid on the two-point perspective, so you're going to have to bear with me. So, if this tick mark, if your tick marks are, an, let's just say, an eighth of an inch, because that's what mine are, you're going to come out onto the floor just shy of an eighth of an inch. So, let's make sure that that's right. It is. So, just shy, just a little bit shorter than an eighth of an inch, and you're going to draw a vertical line. Then you're going to make an X in here. Make sure that it's a perfect X right in the corners and you're not going over the corner but staying inside the corner. So wherever that X is the true middle, you're going to mark that. And then if you're working on this wall, you're going to use the opposing side's vanishing point to pull a line for a perspectival middle center of this wall. So through that center of the X from your vanishing point, just like this, and add on to your wall. So I'm going to do that bigger. Okay, so let's say that we've done this enough. Um, I want to show you what it looks like. So let's say that this is your back corner wall. This is your measure, your first measurement, which would be your eighth of an inch if you were doing this. Um, and then let's say that that is your wall line, just like that, okay? So what you're doing is, whatever your measurement is, you come out onto the floor, but just shy of that measurement, make a vertical line, and then you're going to make an X in that new rectangle that you made. Make sure that it's perfect, because that's important. Okay, it was not perfect. See how it went outside the, uh, this line, so just make sure that yours is. Let's say that this is your vanishing point on the other side of the wall. So right where there's a dead center of that X, you're going to pull a line through your van from your vanishing point through the center of that X, and then add onto your wall. Okay? So that's what you're doing over here, but you're starting on a small scale. So the next thing you're going to want to do is, if you've made an X, the last vertical line you made, you're going to back up one, put a dot there, and then put a dot where that vertical line and the new center line meet, and you're going to connect those and go down onto your floor like that. So that's your new tick mark. And then you move up with a vertical. And again, if that's the last one you made, you back up one here and here. And then up, and you just keep repeating that. So I'm going to show you that on a bigger scale. So 
You made your X, you found your center line, you don't have to make any more X's or find center lines because you're done with that now. So if this was your last vertical line, you're gonna back up to the one you did just before, and then wherever that last vertical line and your center line meet, you're gonna draw a line and connect them, and then come out onto your floor. So let me fix that floor real quick. So that's your new tick mark. So then you're gonna come up with a vertical, Let me put the ceiling line in. Okay, so if this is the last vertical you did, you're going to back up to the last one. And wherever your this one and the center line meet, you're going to draw a line down onto your floor. Sorry, I keep running out of floor room. So then that's your new vertical. And you see how each tick mark gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it gets closer to you. So these count as your feet onto the floor. So this is one foot, two foot, three foot, and then on and on and on. So this would be one foot, two foot, three foot. And you would just keep doing that until you have your foot tick marks. So if you wanted to create a grid on the floor, you would just use your vanishing point on the same wall and pull through each tick mark onto the floor. So let's do that real quick. One, two, we only did three, so you're not gonna see much, three. And then you would do the same thing that you did on this wall to this wall and then use that vanishing point to pull through each tick mark on that wall and then you would have a grid in two point perspective. So what that's going to look like on a bigger scale, let's say that this is your vanishing point over here, and these of course are your tick marks. So you've already got this line because those are the corner lines that you've already drawn previously, right? So then you're going to pull through your first foot, second foot, third foot. See how that works? And then if you do this and carry it on out to this wall, if this is your vanishing point, and let's say this is your first tick mark, that's your second, that's your third, then you're gonna pull through those. And see how it gives you a grid in two point perspective? So it's just like the one point, it's just skewed because now you have two vanishing points. Now we're gonna put furniture. So just like with the one point perspective, you're gonna wanna put a footprint. So let's say that I wanna put my rug right in the middle of the room like this. So you just want it to make sense to your perspective. So remember anything on this side of the wall that's gonna be a long line, you're gonna use the opposing side wall's vanishing point. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put this here. And then over here, so now I have a rug in two-point perspective. 